Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Whip Finish Wednesday. It has been a crazy night. Katie and I were all caught up, ready to go, and we got. A, I was getting ready to push go on the the Instagram. She was ready to push go on YouTube, and we got a phone call that Misha was four houses down, so we had to go and <clears throat> rescue our dog. Yes. And she is in the proverbial dog house now. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So, um, as we get booted up here, because uh, I thought we're all organized, and obviously we're not. Um, and now I can get the, uh, now I should be able to see your comments. So, um, tonight we're going to go over a few different things that we picked up on our trip to uh, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado. We're going to tie a fly and uh, answer some questions. And I got uh, Hey Truman and Hey Jimmy, first two comments that I can see. Glad you guys hopped on with us. And we're sorry we didn't we weren't able to go live the past two weeks. Uh, internet connectivity out uh, out there can be kind of slim pickings. Um, and we were just kind of busy fishing and uh, enjoying the beautiful weather that Katie will tell us all about. Just had a yes. The, this is uh, as Katie, which shirt that I should wear because we always uh, we try to pick up a shirt or something from the fly shops we visited, and this was her favorite Charlie Craven uh, uh, shirt, favorite one. So, uh, Katie, what are you sporting tonight? Well, I have on my shirt from Blue Ribbon Flies, so that's my choice of attire tonight and i love it and if you ever get out to blue ribbon flies in west yellowstone they have a million different really cool t-shirts and actually everywhere i had some awesome t-shirts out there so it's fun fun stuff uh what's up gary bill truman and gary and steve i wish we could have brought everyone back a t-shirt that is for sure. And Josh Riston is on and Joel House and Ken are all on too. Okay. Well, Josh and Joel and Ken. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we're going to start off. I'm, I'm going to start by showing off my boots. I know it sounds kind of silly, but um, it was a big surprise for me. So my boots that I, that I use here are felt with studs. And um, we knew when we go to Yellowstone, we'd have to have... Uh, um, on felt sold boots. Katie's got uh, rubber boots with studs, so she was fine. I was kind of in a mad dash to uh, find a pair of boots quickly. Um, so I, a couple, couple of our buddies recommended um, the corkers, and we'd heard some things about uh, good from the shore. You know, Jersey. What shore are you at, James? Because or Jim, we're going to be at the South Carolina shore in a couple of weeks. Um, so the, the corkers, I'd heard good things about them. I heard some not so good things about them. And, uh, I was, uh, worried that they, they, they wouldn't be as good as our Sims or the Orvis ones that I've had in the past. Uh, but I went ahead and, and got them. And, uh, here, here's the, here's, these are the river ops, the corkers river ops. And, I was worried that um, I'd heard that these soles can come off. And uh, I'm like, well, if the soles start coming off, that's going to be no, no bueno. But it was kind of cool because I was able to, the last day we went fishing with uh, Kelly Gallup's guys. And uh, I was able to take the, um, take the, these, they've got really serious studs on them, take these soles off and put just the regular soles on for being in the, in the boat. And that was, um, that was really cool. Um, but the, this BOA system, the way they feel, these are a size 12 and I'll wear a size 10 and a half normal shoe. Um, and, uh, so I've got to kind of over the 11s when in my Orvis ones and the Sims, when I tried on 11s, they're really tight. Uh, so unfortunately I have to go with a size 12. So the, the, for me, my weighting boots are always roomy, but with this BOA system, I was it was able to um, to really contract um, and look at ski boots. They all yeah, they all look like ski boots, that's for sure. But 
here's something kind of cool. Now we're not on any, we don't get any deals in pro team or anything with, with corkers. We I've chatted with them on Instagram because I think it was the first thing I asked them. Uh, not that I was disappointed, but when you get these um, tungsten carbide soles, there's a big sticker on them that says Titan before use. And of course I've made sure like whatever, just that they, they seem tight. I lost one on this one. And when, when I got back, and these probably have got about 10 days or so waiting on them. And I lost two on this one. So I sent him a note and I was like, hey, these things fell out. And within, I sent them to him in the airport. Um, now I can't find it. I sent, I sent him the note in the airport. And about a day after we got home, I should have pushed play on. Here we go. Um, day after we got home, got a package from Corker's. And it has some new new studs in them, and they suggested that we use the Loctite thread locker. Um, Put those over on camera two. Oh, camera two. This one, the yeah. tying desk. Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, so they suggested put this blue Loctite on there. That'll keep them in, and uh, and they sent the um, the studs for free. So really, it was my mistake for not not really making sure that the um, that these were super tight. But um, but they're a, they're very comfortable to be able to switch these out, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to take them off, which I like. It means they're not just going to fall out. Um, but as far as the grip, when we were fishing in Cheeseman Canyon, um, Chris Steinbeck with uh, Blue Quill Angler, he was shocked at the um, the rocks I was able to go up and down. Um, these things, see how this one's loose right now. So you just unscrew them like this. Then I'll screw them back in. So, um, anyway, you can walk in them forever, and yeah, and the laces don't come undone. Nan is Nan is correct. And here's Cheeseman Canyon, by the way. Yes. So the, those like steep boulders and everything, I was like literally just about hanging off the side of those things. It was um, pretty cool when we're when we're out there. These things just stick. They're really grippy. They're really comfortable. And using the uh, what's up, Greg, over in Australia. Um, sorry, we haven't been on in quite a while, but we're back. Um, and Nan's correct. This BOA system, a lot of the other manufacturers got this. I, the biggest thing I was worried about is if they break, um, it's harder to you don't be able to tie the shoelaces together. A lot of the guides out west use them. This is a very popular uh, boot out west, and um, and they and I, I didn't hear one person say they had, had any problems with them. So uh, just to be able to tighten them up like this, and then when you're done, pop this out and they come loose again. They're really simple. So um, Katie wants a pair now. <laughs> of course. So uh, that that's going to be our fun, our, maybe our next purchase. But if any of you all, uh, Nan said she has some winter cleats. I them to go over my hiking boot. Same set. Okay. Um, so Nan's got a pair. Um, I'm glad that a few of you all have, have got a pair. But if not, check them out. They they seem like they're a little lighter than my Sims. But they... Uh, fish are, yes, Joel, we found out how particular they were. However, Katie caught the first and last fish in Cheeseman Canyon on our trip out there. And it wasn't... Honestly, it wasn't too hard because I was fishing with these two jokers. So, um, yeah. They those were, are the eats, they right? They were eating a lot. Those, those are the eats that we're looking for. And I was fishing a lot. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, Truman, I've, I saw the uh, the sandals being being advertised and I haven't, uh, haven't checked them out yet. But... Um, I uh, just want to share it with you because I, I was really, really surprised at the um, at how well they they held up. But I mean, just for ten days out on the water, they, they should have held up pretty good. But um, but just how comfortable they were, how much support they gave, and um, I I just really like it. And that's right, Truman's got a pair too of the uh, um, corkers, and. So real quick, we'll show you one of the one of the flies that we're going to tie tonight. We're kind of a generic version of the fly. We switch over to the vice itself. What's up, 
Walker all the so Shane, Dirty Rig Flyco over on Instagram. Uh, you ought to come over on YouTube so you can see better. Um, Corker's, he says, Corker's the only thing he's ever worn in the Devil's Canyon really lasts for years, and I fish two to five days a week. Well, I don't fish two to five days a week, and um, I wish I did. But these river ops, um, you know, if I'm going to buy something, I'm going to try to buy the newest and greatest, and that's just the newer one. Hopefully, I, I heard that a lot from people out west that they said they've had them for for four or five years and they've been fine. Um, and uh, destroyed the boat, piece of sand in the tongue mount, and they're done. I went back to laces. See, that takes one time for that to happen, and uh, and you're like, dude, no way. And I've had my laces come untied one too many times, double knotted. That for right now, I'm liking the boas, but. That uh, is not, that's no bueno, Mr. Collins at all. So the fly that's in the vise here is a um, <clears throat> little merger that I had a lot of luck with and a, um, and a double rig, uh, double, a double dry rig. So I had a Comparadon and, um, and one of these guys on at the same time. And this is one that was similar to one that uh, Mr. Barnes was like, here, throw, the, throw this guy. And I ran out of them. So I had this one. And this is one that was actually fished and it's been chewed on a bunch. Um, it literally just came out of my fly box. So, um, and I did still have the, the stickers on my fly box. Um, what's up, Mr. Heiss? What's happening over on the Instagram world? We're getting more people talking on Instagram than, than normal. The Chota Bungee laces are extremely nice. Check them out. I might check those out. Chowed a bungee lace for my um for my Sims boots. Um, so Sh 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 Katie, would you like to uh to show your li your little tote bag, or would you like for me to tie some? I would love to show my little tote bag. Okay, as you call it. Um, it's actually not a little tote bag, but that's okay. <laughs> It's more like a lodgepole fishing satchel. How about that? And that's my Wes Anderson Futura font. And if you're watching on Instagram, um, come over on YouTube. You'll you will see what Katie's showing. She's got like a little slideshow as well over here. Um, and you'll be able to see four different cameras going almost at the same time, uh, as opposed to Instagram where you can't see that well. So apologize. Do you want Insta? I'm sure that that's okay. They can come over here to YouTube anytime. That's right. But anyways, this is it. I love it. It's a fishing satchel. It's kind of old school, but it's also versatile in that I can also use it as my bag during the day, which I have been. Um, just be sure that if you have little shoulders like me, that you switch it often so that you don't get a cramp in your neck. Um, cause a whole day at the mall with two teenage girls on my left side, I woke up the next day and my neck hurt, but I probably need to not carry so much stuff in it. Um, but of course you can also use it as a fishing satchel. If you're a more simplistic kind of person, when you go and you don't need all the, you know, bells and whistles and things that come on some of the fishing bags that we have, but, um, it's just a cool, neat, different thing to use. And, um, I actually used it while we were at West. Most of the time we were out there. And it rained all over it and everything. And it's this awesome, like, um, what do you call this? Like a wax canvas. A wax canvas. Um, and it even sort of like, it's starting to get that kind of um, rugged look to it now that it's been rained on and used a bunch and it's softened up and everything. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. It's got lots of storage in it. It's a fun bag. Um, you can use it for fishing. You can use it for whatever. And so you're, and you're basically using that as your tote, your purse now, right? Yeah. I'm kind of using that as my, like, I'm not really a purse kind of person. More of like a tote. I'm more like a tote kind of person. Um, and now that the girls are getting older, um, I don't need a tote so much anymore. But like when they were, before they could drive, it was like I had to carry all their stuff for them. And I always had to have all the mom stuff in the bag. Um, but now this is my very own kind of bag here that um, I thought was really cool. And I like it a lot. So, I mean, even if you don't want to go for the lodgepole fishing satchel, fish pond has some other stuff in the same material, different bags. Um, but I just kind of like the old school rugged look of these. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, pretty cool bag. And it. so it, it's a it's a good bag for if, if if you're a female fisherman or if you're one of us guys and are looking for a gift for your wife because even if you're not a fisherman, that's a it's just a good kind of rugged tote, if you will. Um, but I was I was surprised when we when we got that how quick you adapted to it and just started using it all the time. Uh, and Dave, I'm glad you found us on here. Maybe we can chat after we're done. Uh, about how we're hard to find. I'd like to fix that if we can. We're relatively newcomers on YouTube, but we like how the, the end result turns out better on YouTube. So uh, I'm glad you found this. There's a bunch of two-piece rods. There's that. And you know, thought you were still in prison. And Mama Angler's not a purse gal either. Yeah, Katie hasn't really been... A, she's the, She has a really nice tote from... Beargrass leather that is phenomenal, but it's definitely a tote, not a purse. Like she has a tote to keep her purses in. Would that be a fair statement? Sure. Yeah. It's, All it's right. fair. Cool. Um, so as I was showing you this little emerger fly that we uh that 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 was fished quite a bit and um and worked really well. What's up, Ryan? What it do? Um so I figured since that was one that I didn't bring enough of, I, I would tie it tonight just for the just for the fun of it. We'll tie some different variations of it. Here's the one that we posted today. This is kind of the I won't say the, the maxed out version. This is more the, the fancy. Let's get it. We switch over to the vice, please, honey. Yes. Um, this is more the um hey, let's just throw everything possible at it. So we've got a nice dyed uh pheasant tail body. We've got some dyed this um, uh, Hungarian partridge here in this yellow, um, more of like a sulfur color for the tail and for the soft tackle. And then we also have some yellow um, <clears throat> CDC on there. So um, pretty, pretty good little uh, little uh, emerger here. And the good thing is, is you can um, you put your floating on here and it'll sit right on top in the film or you can let it uh, get good and soaked and it'll sit below the film. Um, but we got a lot of hits on the other style fly once it had, once the drift was over. So as it was drifting, uh, it would either hit this one or the compare done. But once the drift was over and the swing started, uh, this is the one that would get hit most of the time. Um, so this is a, Pretty pretty fun fly to fish because it works, but it's a you can make it as fun or complicated as you want to. Um, tie. We'll start with just an easy version. We're going to kind of tie this one and more of the somewhat the way uh, Ken's Ken. Oh, Ken! I didn't see you hopping on. I think Katie might have said something. He too. was on. A, he was on earlier. You, you were on the very, while we're chasing the dog down. You were on. Yeah, we our dog escaped. We had to go down to the tennis court down a couple of houses and and retrieve her. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Dave. We we were with um, Gary from Semper Fly. We've been hanging out with Gary. We he came up to the to a fly fishing show in New Jersey, the International Symposium, like two years ago, and we drove him all around New Jersey because it's only about a nine hour drive for us and. If um if we don't have to fly, we won't. So we drive to that one. So we drove him around New Jersey a bit, and uh, he more than repaid the favor and drove us around um, uh, out west. He was the best. So, he yeah. is the best. Um, I usually use the for for this type of fly the Luna Quell because it doesn't have a whole lot of CDC. If if it um if it has uh, CDC the a locksha, but uh, when I was at Charlie's Fly Box, I figured I'd jump into the Flyagra um, uh, boat. So I've got a thing of Flyagra, and I also have a, uh, another. I'm trying out some new floatings. I'm, I'm looking at it now, and I can't see the high and dry. I think um, it's what I'm another new one I'm gonna try. But typically, it's either Aquel or um, uh, locksha, uh, depending on the thing in the in the previous. Gotta be a check the weight. Locks. Uh, yep. Great technique. See if it works. All right. So, just for the fun of it, 
normally um, this, this would be tied with a Zelon uh, a shuck, but we're going to make this kind of a little bit more interesting. And we've got this uh, this hackle from Jim's Flaco while we're out there. This is a, there we go. Thank you, Katie. Oh, that is pretty. It's a honey done. Um, so it's just a hen. So even the color's pretty I darn cool. Katie did pick this one out there. They had a few of them, um, but <clears throat> yeah, the TM, so the, the dirt, not the dry shake. So I'll, I'll use the TM code, the dry shake. Uh, I'm having just an awful time tonight for the, the powder stuff to after it's soaked, but um, I'm trying to remember what the liquid Timco stuff's called. Is that, what, is that what you're talking about, Truman? All right, so I'm going to pull off about this many, was that, about 10 fibers or so, grab it here, see how the butts are lined up, pinch them. Like the dry magic? Is that... Just our normal like thing of dry powder that we've got on all of our bags and our boat bag and everything. Yep, high and dry products are good are good too, for sure. That was like Katie can tell you. That was one of my big questions when I was um going to different fly shops. Is what kind of floatant do you all like? Because I've always just used the loon stuff. Like I said, either the quail or the. You all have heard me talking about them a lot on, on the show. Um, and I'm always interested what other people use. And not a lot of people were jumping on the loon bandwagon, but there was the high and dry was a big one. Um, and uh, the, gosh, I don't get it because I just I think it's high and dry. It's sitting right over here. The, the little tube, uh, the TMCO stuff, I think it's called... Uh, Dry magic. What's it? What's this, the TMCO stuff called? The, it's called dry magic or TMCO dry magic. Yeah. It's like in a pen. It looks like a pen, like a little so, marker. So here's the high and dry. Uh, th this is one thing I'm going to try. This is what Chris Steinbeck used. Um, Charlie Craven on size 12 and bigger the day before. He likes to anyway. Drop them in here, pull them out, and let them dry. And that makes them really, really, really floating. Um, put a bottle of Luna Aqua Quail in the Flyagra bottle. Well, I guess that would work too. Um, anyway, so th these are going to be two new ones that I'm going to try out. I'd say the reality is that they'll probably both be phenomenal and both work well. I don't have any complaints over the Loon. Um, and the, the, hot, the, the Dry Magic is another one that I'm going to be using a little bit more. But I do want to get some... Um, I could not find any at any of the fly shop is the Umqua magic towel or something that it's um, my Amadou patches. There you go, Katie. That's what that, that was it. That's what we've got as well. Um, that's what Charlie Craven uses on his smaller flies. So if he's not using the flagger, he uses that. Um, but the Amadou patches work really, really, really well. Um, but once you, if, if you're like me and you're waiting and you get up to here in water, that patch gets wet and dry, wet and like completely submerged after a little bit, it's just gets brittle and it's trash and they're too expensive to, I've gone through a couple of them. So I've been trying to look for something new <clears throat> and there's like a magic pad or something that you can get. That's sounds like a chamois. Um, and did we bring some stuff back from Blue Quill Angler to give away? We've got a thing of mud. Mud. That's something else that I'm going to talk about. The um, wonderful change in Instagram. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, the, this is the blue, the Zealon dubbing in Yellow Sally, because even though on our little description, we said it's a PMD, we're, we're telling these for sulfurs here on the South Holston or Watauga. It's a really good time for sulfurs. And, um, Basically the same bug, basically, as far as fishing purposes. So I'm going to tie this in, in yellow. I'll slide this up a little bit. And all I'm going to do is just build the abdomen here with this dubbing. So I'll have it start right here, right behind the, right in front of the tail. Nice little, nice little taper. 
And sorry on Instagram, I've been neglecting you guys. So the iris caddis is just that. It's a caddis, and I'm not trying to tie a caddis here, but this is a similar, um, similar fly. And so now we're going to go to our Z-Long. And we use white. Like I said, I had everything all ready to go, but if you don't need flies, do you need flies? Well, sometimes I feel like I do, but um, I use floating on my strike indicators. Uh, usually when I'm uh, when we're floating, we're doing just a, a dropper rig. Uh, I use the... Um, oh, oh, yeah. Gosh. The blue, the blue ribbon flash up was so cool. The building, yeah, was cool. Yeah, that that is a super you, cool building. So, if you don't fish dries, do you need floatant? That's what I was said, talking about with, okay, with yeah, the yeah. Um, thing. Okay, so I've got my little piece of Zelon here that you can see. Um, this is the the simple version of this, and we'll put it. We can switch back to the vice, please. Use the sink stuff for streamers. I, we saw that the sink, like the sink, the opposite of floating. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on like like Craig does, which is a lot of times you see him tied in this way. I'm going to do it flat. So we'll pinch it. Do our do about three wraps here. Make sure that's good. So you can see we've got like a little little loop here right on top, and we'll get some more of this dubbing out. Straighten that up a bit. Right there. That's just locking that piece in there. Put a couple wraps there. Bring it around. Now we're ready to rock and roll. And got a nice clear eye. And one thing that Craig will do is, as opposed to usually you see a lot of us, so we'll keep this really, we'll have this little post here. <clears throat> Let's turn this down a little bit. There. There we go. You know, that post um, that will hide a lot of times, but he calls this a waking post. So when it does, it starts a swinging motion that's going to create a little bit of a wake and um, and fish really well. So he leaves it on there. So this is just a real basic version of the fly we, we tied. So let's do a little bit more, um, a little bit more. Well, it's, it's an iris caddis. I just hate calling it iris, an iris caddis because I'm going to be using it to fish for sulfurs or fish during a sulfur hatch. Um, and that's a size 16, by the way. John Kitty got to see high capacity cows too. Yes. I'm sure most people know the high capacity cows. Um, correct. That's coming up the floating for floating the leader. They use um, the mucilin, the pipe paste. The, there's a lot of places they've got like a, I think it's mucilin that they use out there that looked interesting but uh katie and i were fishing with gary and larry from snake river fly shop and we were caught in a hailstorm a major hailstorm and larry started telling us about the people that die i'm gonna do the same thing here uh with the butts a feather pull us off Make sure those butt ends are lined up so my tips are good. See the color on that. For our sulfurs, um, the the shucks in the back of them a lot of times have like a, a burgundy color. So this is a nice um, a nice color for the shucks on these. Um, but we got stuck in a bad hailstorm. And uh, Larry was telling us about the number of people that die each year on the snake due to um, lightning. 
I'm like, well, we don't get many people to die from lightning at home. Usually it's people that aren't paying attention to generation schedule. We get a couple that just aren't paying attention. Um, and uh, yeah, he told us this in a lightning storm as we were just hugging the side of the bank. There was nowhere to go at all. And um, Katie was getting ready. He had a, a trash bucket or a uh, five gallon bucket in his uh, drift boat that he mm -hmm. used for trash. And Katie, what were you going to do with that? Um, I was trying to like gauge. I was like, it looks like we're going to be here for a while. And in my mind, I was imagining me like dumping the trash out and putting the bucket on top of my head. That yes. was my, that was sort of like my, in my mind, I was trying to create sort of like a, a story to disappear from the situation as he was talking about people getting like struck by lightning and the hailstones were falling down. So I was trying to, you know, disappear into like my fantasy world of me using the bucket as a, an umbrella, essentially. <laughs> yes. So that was, uh, that was fun. And I just noticed Dave, Dave said he stalks the mucilin. And if y'all don't know, Dave is the owner of Caster's Fly Shop. Uh, in North Carolina, um, and uh, he's got the muslin. And what 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 do you suggest people use the muslin for? Was I completely wrong? Which uh, would not be the first time. Um, and Gary's right. We uh, we definitely parked under power lines, but we um, you were struck by lightning on the no! mountain. Man. I'm telling you what the 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 weather it rained every day except for one. The when we we're fishing with Larry in Idaho, uh, the day before Gary and I ran out and had a really good couple hour little sesh, as they say, and um, then we went out with with Larry and we were fishing for smallmouth and carp and giant trout. We didn't see any trout. We saw a ton of smallmouth, but we would see them. We're on the bed and we cast our fly and it'll land right in the bed and they just look at it, land beside the bed, look at it. We swim it past the bed, look at it. They, they, um, the only one we hooked, I won't say I lit off, but I basically, I, I, he went and took, he did take a swipe at it. And when I strip, um, I got him in the back and I'm, I'm admitting that I got him in the back and I was like, no, no, no. Larry's like, you got, he, he ate it. I'm like, dude, I can see it on its back. And, um, so that one got away. That was the only bass that I, that I hooked that day. Uh, but we caught the, a carp, my first mirror carp. Um, yeah, so Mama Angler, it rained every day. Um, so whether it was just the, the the constant change in weather every time or what it was, um, I foul played him this right. Steve. He did. He did. Um, the, the fish just weren't, they were not having it. So while we were talking, all it is, I wrapped some wire in here. This is the 0.2 millimeter um, Silverfly gold, bright gold, yeah, bright gold tying wire here. And we'll put some, um, this is from John Collins' buddy. And I'm, oh gosh, Amos, what, what's his name, John? Sells, sells his um, stuff to... Um, fly shop out there. Oh gosh, I can't even think of the name of it now. I'm sorry with the dog running loose. I got kind of a little bit. Um, you forgot track. stuff. Forgot stuff. Yeah. You forgot stuff. So we've got just some um, um, three pheasant tail fibers tied in. I'm gonna bring my vice over my um or my bobbin over my bobbin cradle and we're just going to wrap it up with touching wraps. Make sure it doesn't separate there. This first wrap is usually, I don't see the only one that matters, but once you get that first wrap in, it just goes up like so. And pheasant tail is another one of those materials like for, you don't typically think of for dry flies, but um, if you soak it floating, the, it'll, it'll float pretty well. Craig Matthews is coming out with a book a little bit and a little bit on just this right here using, um, <clears throat> pheasant tails in a lot more applications. This is a dyed yellow, um, pheasant tail and just three fibers. I'm John Apgar. That's it. John Apgar. Thank Lindrig. you. 
We saw Ludwig in Denver. Yeah, and he sent us a note, and I have not replied to it yet at all. I've got a new... I didn't realize he was in Denver, and he was like, I'm going to drop my kid off, my son off. Can I come by and say hey? I was like, sure. And this is when we were actually at a work meeting. I can't remember if I was wearing a... I was dressed for work or dressed for fun when, I saw, when we met, but we met in person for the first time, so that was fun. So pretty much all I did there is just tied a you know pheasant tail with a little bit longer tail, nothing um, uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, okay, so what I want to do next is I'll tie it like I did the other one. I'm using the the sulfuria. My favorite. Just because I love the color, it's not too bright. It's just for on the South Halston, it's just the perfect color, orange. Orange is yellow. And um, can I have this a little bit thin, but not too thin for the thorax? And let's, before we do that, oh, shucks, I put that in with the wrong dubbing. Don't do that. Yeah, I was talking about how that we're not quite together on. Um, <clears throat> putting everything, putting all the fly tying stuff up, but. And when you say were, you mean you and your special secret friend? Yeah. Like not at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Nana. Yep. He sure does. He sure does. That's one, th that's one thing that people. You know, I get caught up on using the wire ribs and stuff, but there's no reason not to just use um, um, no, no, your thread. And the nano silk is pretty daggum strong. So I've got my nice CDC feather here. This was the Swiss CDC. I don't know, dyed yellow, dyed pale yellow, something like that. Um, and I'm going to just capture it in. Just I'm going to set it upside down here. Just work my thread backwards, and I'm sorry that I put my um, dubbing on already. So I'm gonna slide this through, keeping it all on top till the tips just past the hook eye. That's good right there. Now I'm gonna start my dubbing at the front. Work it back. That turned out okay. So now I've got a nice little, nice little thorax, and I'll do our, our loop part. So I just grab the the CZ feather, pull it all forward because I like having all that goodness coming through. And you can adjust it a little bit, but don't make it too big. So we'll put a couple wraps to capture it. You just want a loop. You don't want a pompadour. Yep. So that's a little bit long. So I'll just pull it. Slowly a touch more. Okay. And this two just lock that in. I've been trying to stop myself from putting those extra two um, two in front, but in this case, I know that's going to slip out if I don't. So we've got this little loop here, as you can see. Um, if you wanted to, you could have tied the um, just the W in and then tied both in here, but that, that makes for a bigger tie-in point right at the head here. But then again, you could do it like Craig does and just tie them in and then cut it and leave leave that long. But let's do this. Um, Gary, I was finishing with Jeff there, there digging around. Also, Hopper, going to need to order some. There you go. I think we might have one or two. So now I'm going to try to find a feather that will match up here without spending 30 minutes trying to do it. It might be a touch. Yeah, it might be right. All right. So we've got our pretty feather, as you can see, got right there. I'm going to take my fingers, 
Just grab it by the tip. You can use tweezers if you want to, but I'm just using my fingers. Make sure you got a somewhat good division point there. I'm gonna cord up my thread, cord up my thread just a little bit so it's got a little more bite. I'm gonna cross it over right where that was and pull just a little bit. So you can see I've got see how this thing twisted around just right. See how there's just a little bit. There you go. So I pulled it through. That will make that first wrap. And we'll pull this. There we go. That'll make that first wrap a little bit cleaner. I'll take that tip and cut it out of there. Try not to cut off your feather or your CDC or your thread or anything when you do that. There we go. So Instagram did a crazy thing. So before when we did giveaways and little, not really competitions, but when we did a giveaway and they wanted to use hashtag what finished Wednesday, post their stuff. I still see when you, when you guys post something, use what finished Wednesday, which is awesome. But unfortunately now I don't see, I can't go back and look at the history. I can see recent popular posts. Um, but I can't see all recent, all just like In chronological. Order. Yeah. So if you post something and you only got, you only have two likes, it's kind of just dis, kind of disappears. And I'm not worried about the number of likes. I want to see what everyone's posted. So um, you guys put your thinking cap on and try to figure out how to, um, how we can search for the hashtag. Cause if not, I'm fine to tell you guys just to email us and can't that way Katie can share the pictures you all do and go ahead if you all tie anything remote remotely like this tie tie it and send it to demuth fly fishing at gmail.com uh so katie will have it so she can share it um sorry i had to like actually concentrate on my whip finish so i was getting kind of close to the head but i've got plenty of room for tippet it looks okay um but yeah, well, that feather is pretty, pretty cool. And I think it did okay measuring it out. Um, we'll do one more simple one, I think, since we started late. But um, but look and see how, uh, um, if you've got any suggestions on how we can do like the, do the giveaways. Now we switch back over to the main camera while I put anything in, put another hook in. Um, because we love seeing one of the biggest things about this show like doing is we like seeing what you all tie up, uh, whether you're brand new. Uh, some of y'all have asked questions. You post something, you'll ask a question or you just send us something, ask a question, but, um, <clears throat> or you're a lot better tire than us. And, and you're like, Hey, look how awesome this is. And it looks great. So we like the community atmosphere and, and Katie likes now being on YouTube to be able to show the flies that were posted in the previous week. But we can't. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, what's up, Mike? And yeah, the thin, thin stem on the hen is nice. Um, but we can't search for hashtag Whitfish Wednesday by the order it was posted anymore. So put your thinking caps on. And um, <clears throat> I've seen big fish. Yeah, I was, I was excited. I was excited. I was happy. We um, were fishing three dollar bridge. You tell a story, Gary, and I'll I'll start tying another one that's a little bit a little bit simpler. Um, one that doesn't. I mean, we everyone should have a hen, so that's all you need to tie that the tail and the soft tail if you want. Um, you can use post material. You could use um, poly yarn. You can use zelon for the loop. Um, obviously CDC for the loop, um, use what, whatever you want for the loop. This one I'll go a little bit different just because I don't have enough stuff out. Let's see. Let's pull out, um, here we go. EP trigger point fiber. That's what we use. I'm going to lose a big one. Well, what we, we were fishing the, um, at Madison $3 bridge. And um, 
Now, Gary also would probably say, I've never seen some, someone so excited about catching a whitefish because the first, no, not the first fish of the trip, but um, the first thing, Misha, quit. Um, dogs don't go through the door. Um, but my first whitefish I caught was the first whitefish I've ever caught. And I was so pumped. Um, yep. I was so excited. I was like, Gary, you got to take a picture of me with this fish. That might be the only fish I asked him to take a picture of me with. But um, it's my first white fish. Sounds crazy. It'd be like Gary coming here and like we catch a sucker or we catch a, uh, I don't know, a, a war paint shine or something. He's like, dude, it's awesome. But um, but yeah, fun times. But we were, um, so I was year nipping right there at the $3, at $3 bridge. And I caught a couple, two or three, and Gary came over, and I don't remember what we were talking about, but I started fishing again. And I don't know why he was standing there. He wouldn't, like, watch me fish the whole time. Maybe just, um, <clears throat> maybe he was just uh, critiquing me. I don't know. But I hooked into a good one. It was probably 20, 20, 20 inches or so. It was, I was happy with him. But unfortunately, right there at Three Dollar Bridge, it um, you've got like little pools. You're, you're fishing right next to the shore. Sorry, I didn't realize it. Fishing right next to the shore, and um, will you uh, switch back to the main camera, please? There we go. So it was fishing right next to the shore, and you know, you're wading out five to ten feet or so. But the water's too swift with all the rain and everything. You, we weren't getting really out out far. And you've got boulders all on the side. So you're basically fishing those pockets. Um, sometimes you're on the, the shore. Sometimes you're a little bit in, a little bit out in the water. Um, but you have to pretty much, if the fish gets out in the water, out in the main current, it's going to go down and go into the next shore. And that's the next uh, pocket. That's pretty much what it did. Um, it got into the next pocket, went around, and I was fishing 6X tippet. And it uh, it got off pretty quick. But I, I was just, when I saw it roll, I was so excited. I'm, I know, I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets excited when you lose a fish. Like, you're ticked, but you're like, holy moly, did you see that? That was so, <clears throat> that was something. But I'm not like Katie. I, 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 don't, I don't land every fish I hook. Katie, on the other hand, she just, it doesn't matter. She, she lands them all. Right, uh, honey? I mean, I'm not, you get real excited. Like, you're, you know, um. I'm a little more like, um, I kind of stay like in the middle a little bit. So maybe you just don't notice when I'm not landing him. Maybe. Maybe. All right. So we'll do one that's going to float just a little bit more. Um, and we'll just use straight sulfuria. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Now, what's the bonefish, Gary? Sorry, I was yapping. Oh, that's those are those white fish that we caught. Yeah, the white fish. The mountain the white fish. Um, that was exciting. That was kind of, you know. Well, the the guy at Kelly Gallup's the hunter, he was like, Man, this white fish can be frustrating because when you go out and you want to catch them, they're hard to catch. But when you're trying to catch a trout or catch something else and the white fish bite is on, you can't buy a bite of anything. <laughs> it's funny the way he talked about it. It's like you just can't do it. Can't get a bite anywhere else. Um, and that's that last day fishing on Madison by Campfire Lodge. That's that's all I caught for whitefish. And it was fun. They're I mean, fun I'd, to catch. They're, I'd rather catch I that don't than understand nothing. what the deal is. I mean, maybe they're not as pretty, but like you know, that's just a matter of opinion. That was the one shirt I was hoping to get from at Kel at uh, the slide in was the Whitefish Lives Matter shirt. He told he explained to me who has those shirts and why he doesn't have the shirts. Um. So the whole time I was just dubbing on a real thin dubbing noodle. Can it start right by the base of the tail? And we'll do a little bit of a taper. Not much. How's, how's that, how terrible does that look? Bring it back. The deer were in the front yard and they went over into Nancy's yard and ate the bird seed out of her bird feeder. That's what Misha was barking at. Oh, well, you go, girl. 
She got him. Like I said, John Rednets, they love them. They, they, mm hmm. I, we did not eat any of the whitefish. I didn't know you could eat them. Hey, learn something new every Michael, day. Michael, I know. She's something else. She escaped earlier today and, and ended up in our neighbor's tennis courts. Just now, that's why we're late getting on, Michael. So you might we be had late, to go late here. I was getting ready to push go on Instagram and um, my phone rang and I was like, who's this? And it was a neighbor saying, is this your dog? Yep. That's her. It's her beautiful girl. Right. We have uh, Timothy Vetter has jumped on and wants to know what we're tying. So I'm tying uh, a little variation. We tie some different things. I'll show you in a second, but um, it is probably more akin to the iris caddis, but uh, this is one that we fished quite a bit when we were out at um, Yellowstone fishing on the Madison, fishing mainly at Firehole with, with this one. Um, and we were fishing with Craig Matthews, pretty decent fisherman. Um, but, um, but anyway, so we're tying the, the, the Irish cast. But the reason I say, yeah, is because we're going to fish these here on South Holson during, this, during the sulfur hatch that's going on right now. And um, they'll work just fine for that too. Just not, we're not doing quite as chunky of a body, but um, it'll work fine. A little, um, little sulfur, little PMD emerger. I won't put that back in the bag. Some of those crazy red horse fish and that's what, yep, they, well, red horses are kind of more chunky, but, um, anyway, so I'm just going, I've got that looped over, I'm just putting a little bit more dubbing here, so you can see I've got just a little bit more, you put a, a touch more than a little bit more. And really that like, as far as we're, we're having a floating conversation earlier, and it'd just be based on the conditions of the day, whether I would load this up with floating or not. Because there'd be times where I would not want to um, load it up. And there'd be other times I would. Because if I knew I was mainly just going to swing it across, I was going to fish it more in the film. Oh, come on. Bugger. Here we go. And the wood finisher. 107 degrees. Whew. Wild. All right. One, two, three, four. That wood finish cleared out my move that little bit of dubbing right there off my eye. Stood up my post. Something like that, and we're good. So you see, we got a little little loop there. I did do this loop horizontal as opposed to vertical, um, and the silhouette on it, as you can see, is more bubbly that way because that's what the fish are going to see. It looks pretty good. The loop goes to the basically where the um, the body ends and the tail or the shuck begins, and uh, just a real simple like this is truly a guide fly, but. I've made it really complicated, and uh, here's the one. Uh, yeah, this is one that we tied just a minute ago, which is with pheasant tail and CDC and um, uh, some soft tackle. So similar style, just a little bit, just a little bit different. Um, so right, just from Carlos year and free send the best of seen now it's over. Well, they're still going strong here. Hopefully this weekend, Katie and I'll be able to get out sometime, and um, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Okay. So Katie, let's switch back over to the main camera. We'll give a quick recap for anyone who just, who joined late. So when we went out West, we used these corker boots. <coughs> we're really um, amazed with them. They were, um, uh, I had, I had felt boots for here because the rocks are really, really slick and felt. So the only thing I've found that would work well. Um, I use these tungsten and carbide. I've never used uh, corkers before. We're not on any team or anything with them. Um, but um, I was really happy with how these stuck. These are very aggressive. Um, so much so that some of these came out three 
And I sent, when we were in the airport, delayed, I sent Corkers a note. And about a day after we got home, I had a new set of, um, of uh, screw-in things for him. So great customer service from Corkers. I've heard a lot of really good things on about them uh, from you guys and from people out West. Personally, I love the, the BOA system uh, just because I've always used laces. However, John Collins had a, a horror story to tell about his his bow at breaking. Then you kind of can't do anything. But um, that's just, I like it so far. But um, anyway, and you can get felts for the corkers. You have to wash really well, maybe one or another. It's right, Nan. Um, so, guys, we're so excited. We're finally back. We'll be here next Wednesday night tying something. Um, but no... <laughs> lid rig no hand delivery we've got a cool we're still like scott you die if you saw this place it is a wreck um we've got some cool what i want to use is fly prep um little stations from lid rig, lid, lid rig that we're going to use um i think gary shipped them back to us um go talk. see you bill thanks for hopping on enjoy your dinner um Gary, I don't know who Ari is, but Scott Ari is... is Ari with Corkers. Oh, I don't know. I still, still don't know who that is, but maybe I'll get to meet Ari sometime. Maybe Katie will, because Katie's wanting a pair. Um, but anyway, um, it's been a blast hanging out with you guys. We love these Wednesday nights. Uh, send us any questions. If you do type one of these flies, use hashtag Whip Finish Wednesday. If you want to tag us, that so we make sure we see it. That'd be great. Or if you want to email them, email them to demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. Katie will get them and we'll share them next week with everyone. And we have some mud to give away. How are we going to give? I don't know who, who posted the, the JK Flasher. Do you? Katie? Do you know who posted? There was, I know there's a couple, but I, don't, I can't find any of them. Do you know how to do it? I don't know how to do Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you do Instagram. Well, know. guys, seriously, if you know a way that we can sort through the hashtag whip finish Wednesday, guys, go, go look. Um, Al, I don't know what we're going to tie next week. Um, shoot us a note. And how about this? You and I can decide what we're going to tie next week. Um, send us a message on Instagram or send us an email. We'll, we'll chat and we'll come up with something good to tie next week. Usually we're tying just like we did tonight, whatever we need to put in our box. Um, but Red our box, darts. our box are fully stocked right now, pretty much. Red so darts. Katie wants a red dart, and that'd be fine too. Um, but uh, anyway, what else? What else am I forgetting? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, honey. Well, guys, it is super awesome to be back. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday night at nine o'clock Eastern time. Those of you all on Instagram. Uh, probably Houdini. That's that's right. Trout 30. You ought to check us out on YouTube at Trout 30 because you'll see 10 million times better and hear better and you can make funny comments like that and uh, I'll actually be able to see them. Um, <clears throat> and, Look, you got uh, it. You got Love Red Darts, some terrestrials. Al's going to think about some it. Some terrestrials for the summer. We could do a Charlie Boy Hopper. We got some of those. That'd be mm -hmm. fun. That's this one. Nope. I can't see. This one right here. We do that one. And then yep. you can wear your morning wood special uh, sweatshirt, honey. But it's sure. probably too hot right now for the morning wood. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Is it too hot for morning wood, honey? It might be a little bit warm for that, yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you so much. See you, Patrick. Jimmy, appreciate appreciate everyone that shared the story. And uh, Mark, uh, you'll have to catch the rerun. Hopefully we'll catch you next week. See you, John. And Bye thanks John. again for the flies. They, we fished some Mr. Collins. They were great. See you guys. Bye, guys. Have a good night.